you niggas. Who raised you niggas? Turn it up loud. Hi guys, welcome back to another episode of Makeup Diaries with Mariah. I'm Mariah. First of all, doesn't my hair look so cute? Like I can't get over how cute I look. That is not the point of today's video. As usual, we're sitting on my couch. So girl, we gotta talk, okay? Cause it is summertime. I know like, I feel like there really wasn't a spring. Like we're just jumping straight to summertime. So let me tell you why you need to be outside, not inside. Today, my iPad is dead. I did not charge it. So we're, we're on the phone with it. Cause my iPad, we're on the phone with the notes. Bitch, we still have notes, but we're on the phone with it because my iPad is dead and I didn't charge it. And that's my fault. And I miss her. And I know y'all miss the iPad. Me and her, we locked the fuck in, me and that iPad, except I did not charge her. But today, I'm gonna tell you why you need to be outside and not in this summer. Because these men are not worth settling down with. So we're gonna talk about the top icks I have gotten from men that I've dated. So I didn't put these in any particular order and I just wanna give you a trigger warning if I if I gag, it's it's not your fault. It is simply like reliving and retelling this is re-traumatizing me. So um, obviously, hey girls, stay tuned. Make sure you subscribe. Make sure you follow me on social media. Make sure you like this video. Like leave me a comment. Like I want to know, have any of these icks ever happened to you? What are your biggest icks when it comes to like dating men or anything like that? And if I, if, like, I, I probably have more that I have blocked out of my memory, but girl, I'm about to drag myself just a little bit about to, by telling this, but I just went with what came to memory as like the most cringeworthy things. And it's reminding me of why I'm not going to settle down. Not anytime soon. Okay. Not anytime soon after I read this. So let's get started. Number one, and again, this is in not no particular order. I just wrote, I just numbered it for myself. When a guy told me he worked for Yelp, I think Yelp is probably the whitest thing that has ever been created. It's literal snitching, but it's difficult to use. Like you can't use Yelp on a phone. You have to download the app and then you do it on the internet and every single thing on there is niggas snitching. Of course he was white. Of course he was white. And I was like, oh, you're like Mad Men. And he's like, no, I helped create it. I said, oh, so you're like an OG snitch. Ick, had to let him go. Never saw that man again after that. And I also felt like Yelp was invented by Republicans. Like it just seems like the people who would invent Yelp would be Republicans or like, centrist democrats and nothing makes me drier than those two things so that was ick number one ick number two i went on the worst date of my life and i made a whole video specifically about this date but this man showed up in a loose v-neck t-shirt it was like a u it was like a u-neck but it was a v-neck t-shirt first of all i show up and i show out you know what i mean like when i show up i show up to impress like i'm looking good okay I, I'm giving you all of that and you show up with a shirt you couldn't even bother to iron. You couldn't even go to Target and buy, baby, you could steal it for all I give a damn. $5.99 for a new t-shirt? Ick. Couldn't do it again. You couldn't be bothered to put on a better t-shirt? That's how little you think of me? Done. All right. <laughs> Done. The next time. The next one, number three, this man showed up to a date with his hairline looking like a winding road and was wearing basketball shorts like he just came from the gym. Who raised you niggas? Who raised you niggas? I, um, I blocked that date out of my head for so long because I looked so fucking good that night and you're wearing basketball shorts and a zip up hoodie and couldn't even bother 
to get not even a haircut, a lineup, nigga. You couldn't even get your shit lined. I just flabbergasted. Okay, number four. love for myself like I was I was struggling a little bit and so I was sleeping with this guy and he had, he was like a foreign exchange student we were sleeping together for like an entire semester and I do not know his name I cannot remember his name I don't know that's not the it the thing was when was when we would you know we would do our do we would do our thing if we were watching CNN he made me watch like the stock market <laughs> he made me watch the stock market like channel in order for him to be able to finish <laughs> I'm embarrassed to this day and I okay so that was an ick for both of us like that was an ick I gave myself because we did that multiple times okay like repeatedly next <laughs> okay oh my god this one was so, I hate it when guys find out that I'm a content creator because like, ew, don't look at my content. Like, no, I only usually, I start by telling them like, oh, I work a day job is X, Y, and Z. And that's typically all I'll tell them until they're like, oh, what's your Instagram? And then I'm like, oh, okay. And I also have to tell you like, I'm a content creator. So I think I put that on one of my dating profiles that I'm a content creator. And so then this guy messaged me and he, he's like, oh, you, what do you do? Like, what kind of content do you make? And I told him like, I do like a lot of social media content and I have like a YouTube channel and then he said he wanted to make he said do you want to collaborate on a mukbang video you know those videos where people are sitting and they're talking they're eating food number one there is something like deeply internal in me that would never allow me to like eat like talk with my mouth full like I feel like my mama would just come out and like beat me like she would come and slap me if she saw me just out talking with my mouth full that's number one but number two ew get a real job you're a man how are you gonna provide for both of us if you're a content creator i have to be the one with the fake job i cannot date another creative so when he sent me that message saying do you want to collaborate on a youtube video i don't know why but my whole body felt the ick i was like oh oh like oh no i don't want that so that was another one. Um, number six, number six. Um, there was once this guy, and when I kid, I'm not even kidding. He had the smallest penis I have ever encountered in my life. And while he was, you know, doing it from behind, I'm not feeling a single thing. And he's like, and I was like, oh, are we done? And I was starting to move away. And he said, no, where are you going? I'm going to give you some more of this dick. I said, baby, you don't even have enough to go around. Like, you don't have enough for me. You, you don't have enough for yourself. Your hand is bigger than this. How, how are you going to give me some more of something I have not had? And up, up until that point, I had never, ever slept with a guy who didn't have, like, at least an average size penis. But this guy? It was too much. It was too much. Like I couldn't, I couldn't do it. Um, number seven, <laughs> this one is, this is like the worst possible thing that a man could do, but this is the problem with men. And it's why y'all really need some serious therapy because do I look like a therapist? Do not spill your guts to me. I don't know what it is about this face that makes people want to tell me their entire life story. I don't want to know. Stop talking. One time I brought this man, this is number seven. One time I brought this man home from the club to, you know, do our thing. You know, you know how 
break it down. Like I was, I was, I was in that phase in my life where I was just doing one night stands and stuff. I don't do that anymore. I'm less compelled. Um, but he, we finished or whatever. And instead of him getting up and going home to, to his life, he laid on my chest and started saying like, yeah, you know, when I was seven, my dad left us and he never really came back. I never really saw him after that. And that's kind of what has made me, this is unprompted. I haven't said any, I have not asked him a question about his life. I have not offered a question, anything about my life. He's just talking about this unprompted. Like, I, I don't even know where this came from. Just telling me his life story. Ugh. Now, now we're never going to do it again. You will never be inside of this again. You, it's, I was, and I was just like, how do I broach the subject of asking you to get the fuck out now? You know, because I don't want to be insensitive, but you kind of got to go because I don't want to hear this shit. Ugh. Okay. Um, what's the next one? This one is such a big ick for me. And it is something that guys have done multiple times. This is number eight. Number eight. I can count. I told, I don't know what it was. I was messaging this guy on like a dating app. It might've been Hinge cause that's the one I use the most. And I think I said nigga in one of my messages. Like it's just a word that I use conversationally. It's a word that I use regularly. I'm black, I can use it. I know some black people feel differently about that. You're free, if you're black, you're free to feel however you want about the usage of the word nigga. If you're white or any other race, you can't say it, point blank period. But I think I said nigga and then this guy just in the most cringiest way, just turned up trying to prove to me his blackness. Like he's calling, he's talking to his coworkers, calling them crackers. At one point he said, you know, I'd be hiding from the crackers all day. Like at the end of the day, they need like Jim Crow to find me and stuff. That is literally me paraphrasing something he said. I think despite how the fuck would that work, you don't have to do that much. Like I get it that you're black. I get it that you're down. I get it that you're hip. You don't have to overperform your blackness to another black person. I'm not judging you, but I find that guys do that all the time and it immediately turns me off. And I'm like, okay, we get it. You're very pro-black. We get it. Calm the fuck down with that shit. Like, calm down. And I find that light-skinned people, when I like talk, they do it the most. I'm sorry. I know one of your parents is white. And so you have to overcompensate. Do that with somebody else because I'm rolling my eyes so hard they're going to get stuck in the back of my motherfucking head. That was such a big ick for me. Like, I could not even... I was like, okay, relax. Calm that shit the fuck down. Okay, like, you don't... You doing a bit too much. And so it didn't work out with him. It didn't work out with that guy because I was like, I can't do the performative blackness when you're a black person. Like, what the fuck? Who are you showing out for? Like, I don't give a fuck. You know what I mean? Okay, I have one more. I should have done 10, but I could only think of nine. Forgive me for what I'm about to say. This is embarrassing for me as well, that I even, that I couldn't spot the signs of this. I was talking to this guy and I was talking to him for a minute and we had been trying to meet up and then there was one thing and there was another and another and so we couldn't meet up and I was like, okay, this is gonna be the last. I was inviting him to come over. I was like, oh, do you wanna come over and like, it was a Sunday night and typically on Sundays I'm not inviting nobody to my motherfucking house no you cannot come over like it's it's I'm, I'm not doing that but I was like you know why don't you come over um hang out with me um and then he asked me if I had Zeus Network if you don't know Zeus Network is that terrible network with those terrible shows and it's supposed to be black owned and we're supposed to love it but it's just really a bunch of women on there fighting like and and maybe when I was younger I, I used to watch Bad Girls Club but I'm I don't see the appeal of it now I'm not interested in it I don't get it I think it's trash I think it, I, it's not even good trash it's just like it's 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 awful it's terrible trash like I hate it I hate it so much he asked me did I have Zeus Network because he wanted to watch baddies and I said no and he said oh well I can't come over because I can't miss my program he, mind you, he was almost 40. He's almost 40. He was like 35, 36, telling me he couldn't come over to see me because he wanted to watch baddies on television. I don't have 
the words. I'm still disgusted to this fucking day. Y'all. I don't even know what else to say. So I say all of this to say, I say all of this to say, be outside this summer. Because these niggas, this cannot be the batch of men we were left with. Like, it's crazy if it was. Okay, if you made it all the way to the end of this video, thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to leave me a comment. Let me know which one of these gave you the biggest ick. Or if guys have given you bigger icks, like, let me know. Because I'm, I'm pretty sure that I probably have, like, the worst icks that any man has ever given a woman. But I'm not trying to compare tragedies. Um, and don't forget to subscribe, to like this video, to follow me on social media, all that good stuff. And I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye! You're trying to get charged, you're a danger.